I've had three presidential appointments uh, and several others in the general environmental area, uh, two of them in the White House. I've also been an uh, environmental law professor at the major uh, UC law schools. This bill takes away the power of cities to decide things that were granted to them by the Constitution. The U.S. Constitution gives the police power to the states. The state constitution has given it to the cities. Your legislation, which would take away the power of decision from cities and give it to a private corporation, in effect, uh, is an attempt to change the California Constitution by legislation, and that's uh, not going to get very far, and it's an extremely un unwise uh, step to try to do. The uh, bill has the effect of destroying the value of, of property. Uh, you can imagine what happens when one of these WT WTFs get uh, folks put up in front of your, your house uh, or your neighbor's house and, uh, or in your cities, in your parks. Uh, the power of the city to control itself to use the police power to control health and welfare effects of uh, these uh, WTF towers is uh, not going to be easily challenged by this legislation. You're it will lead time, to sir. enormous amount of uh, litigation, uh, most of it predictably unsuccessful. It will lead to enormous expenses by the cities and the counties because they are not going to be able to get insurance and the insur as the insurance industry has said quite clearly that they will not uh, insure any installation uh, radiating uh, e EMF. Scientists from 42 countries are now warning their governments about the emerging health problems associated with wireless radiation and Canadian doctors and scientists have added their voices. The most prevalent symptoms include headache, fatigue, decreased ability to concentrate, tinnitus, irritability and insomnia. Impacts on the heart and the nervous system are also of great concern. At lower frequency, scientists are predicting damage to eyes, loss of insect populations which are already declining, antibiotic resistance in bacteria and physiological effects on the nervous system and on the immune system. Radiation from radio frequencies is classed in the same category of carcinogens as lead. One advisor to the World Health Organization said there's enough evidence that if they were to re-evaluate radio frequency radiation... It would be placed in class one, i.e. a human carcinogen, and governments could not possibly Hundreds of peer-reviewed scientific papers have been published demonstrating harm to humans and the environment. This evidence includes increase in cancer, sperm damage, reproductive harms, memory and learning deficits, especially in children, and damage to our DNA, nervous systems, and the cells in our bodies. Unfortunately, Health Canada and the FCC are stuck in the 1920 science that states tissue must be heated to be harmed. The last update from Health Canada of our safety guidelines was deeply flawed. 5G has all the issues associated with 2, 3 and 4G plus some additional concerns. Because of the technology limits, 5G will require significantly more antennas and they will be significantly closer to our homes schools and places of work. We have one instance where a small cell antenna has been installed 20 meters from a child's bedroom. Which residents of Pittsfield's Alma Street neighborhood say is causing them to experience chronic symptoms. Getting up in the morning, being nausea, headaches when I get home after an hour, being home, getting a headache. I never had headaches before. Now I got headaches all the time. For some, the effects are so bad they are spending as much time as possible away from their homes. One family is in the process of selling and others are considering leaving as well. 
we've actually been sleeping away from the tower. Um, we have mattresses on the floor elsewhere, and it's no way to live out of a bag um, going back and forth, knowing that you're exposing your children to this. For the first time, this has made me uh, really start thinking seriously about living somewhere else, which is really sad because I wanted to grow old in this in this neighborhood, but I won't you know, let my health be affected and, and just stay in a house. Dr. Sharon Goldberg, who has testified to Congress about the potential harm of cell tower emissions, says these stories are similar to many others across the country. There's a lot of clarity on symptoms and effects of, of microwave exposure in humans, and their symptoms are completely, completely consistent. Pittsfield Health Director Gina Armstrong confirmed the Pittsfield Board of Health will begin an investigation into the tower's effect. 5G is not just one kind of radiation. It's going to include 3G and 4G in it as well. And it's going to bring massive amounts of radiation right next to your bedroom window. Do you really need the capacity for your phone to talk to your dishwasher or, or your dryer or your coffee pot? I don't want that. And I don't want to see the consequences of what will happen to us and to the wildlife around us if we have exposure to this kind of radiation that we cannot escape. It will be everywhere. That's the only way it will work. There's no way out once we launch 5G in major cities. You will not have a place to go where you will not be exposed. It's not been tested adequately, and the tests that we do have show that it can damage our health. It can accelerate the growth of bacteria. It can accelerate the growth, growth of, of viruses, and it can damage the eye. That's not an acceptable risk as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not alone in that view. There are hundreds of scientists who agree with me who've petitioned the UN for a moratorium on the development of 5G until we have safety guidelines in place, which we do not at this time because the FCC has said they don't need to revise their 23-year-old safety guidelines. We at Environmental Health Trust are challenging that. Did you know that cell phone, the one in your pocket, emits radio frequency radiation? As long as your phone's turned on, even if you're not talking or texting. The American Academy of Pediatrics in over a dozen countries recommends reducing children's exposure to wireless radiation. When using a cell phone, I always keep it away from my body. I use speakerphone or a headset like this. To stop microwave exposure, I put my phone on airplane mode and turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth function. I hold the phone at a distance and make sure it's not touching my body. Cell phones are not toys. Children's brains and bodies are still developing and are vulnerable to wireless radiation. Practice safe and responsible habits with yourself and your children. When using the computer, I always try to make sure my connection is corded, not wireless. Remember not to use your cell phone in the car. The phone works at higher power in metal surroundings and bounces around, increasing your family's radiation exposure. For their safety. For your safety. Because children are more vulnerable. Remind them. Remind yourself. To limit your microwave radiation exposures. Probably the most important thing I did I was involved as a young scientist in the committee that actually reviewed the data and recommended that there be no smoking on airplanes. You may be shocked to hear that it was even a question for science at the time, but it was. And when I look at what we know now about mobile phone radiation, I see some very interesting similarities. A growing number of prominent doctors and scientists are raising warning flags over radiation this morning and your kids could be facing a greater risk of exposure. I think the most important study is a study by the National Toxicology Program in a classic large carcinogenicity test, one of the largest ever performed, and for that matter, one of the most expensive. They found increased risk of the tumors, which we believe radiofrequency radiation is causing in man. Uh, particular tumors called schwannomas. In the rats, they were in the heart. In, in humans, they're often in the nerve, the ear nerve, the vestibular nerve. Cell phone providers say they follow all safety guidelines put into place by the FCC. The current FCC safety standard was developed nearly 20 years ago. The, the manufacturers actually tell people in the instruction manual, which I never read, to put, not to put the cell phone against your ear. 
it does say exactly that. There's a, the BlackBerry, for example, warns to keep your phone at least 0.98 inches away from the body when transmitting. With, uh, with an iPhone, for example, it's 5 eighths of an inch. At this point, the evidence has become sufficiently strong that cell phone radiation is a human carcinogen. A major development from California's Department of Public Health, high use of cell phones may be linked to certain types of cancer and other health effects, including brain cancer and tumors, lower sperm counts, headaches, and effects on learning, memory, hearing, behavior, and sleep. If it was a real problem, I would know. If it was a real problem, the government would protect us. How come I'm not hearing about this? They're all things I've heard when I give seminars. You know, I get up there and they say, oh yeah, if this was really a problem, they would have told us. I am they. I am a, you know, legitimate scientist and I am telling you.